So, do you want to know the secret quick fix to getting that first dream job in security? Alright, listen up. First of all, there is a secret. Secondly, there's no quick fix. Sorry. I'm gonna present the framework, which consists of three parts. But it will take you a long time though, so... I want to split this series up into three parts. Part one is the preparation process. Before you even send in your application to, to begin with, right? So how do you prepare up to that point? Because that what that part is a couple of months in preparation. Part two is well, how do you get that interview? How do you prepare for it? What kind of questions are you likely to get? And sort of that whole process from the sending of the application to the actual interview. And then part three is when you actually walk out of the interview and how do you deal with the feedback, how do you follow up because uh, you may get it, you might not get it it's not really up to you and that's one of the points here is that you cannot control the outcome you can only control your inputs and that's the main thing that we're going to talk about here I figured I should make a couple of videos just explaining at least my process of how I do this and it doesn't mean that it's going to work perfectly for everyone so Again, I'm not telling you like how you should do it, I'm just saying how I did it. And I have been successful doing this. So if you want to give it a try, um, then please use my framework or whatever you want to call it. But the first thing that it comes to when you're thinking of which role to apply for, it's basically just a numbers game. It's a numbers game and a bit of luck. So what I mean by that is you have to apply for just lots and lots and lots of roles. Just don't wait for that one perfect role and just apply for that. Just keep applying for as many things as you possibly can. And just because you apply for a position and let's say you go to that interview, uh, it doesn't really feel that interesting, you should still go to like a second interview if you can, you should still get into negotiations around pay because you need that experience under your belt. So when you get to that perfect role that you really want, then you've already had a couple of these interviews, these negotiations, these, this everything. Because it will be a bit nervous. Like you're going to be nervous for the first couple of times. And that's natural. Like that's, you know, that's the way all of us are. But you want to get those first sort of nervous interviews because they will be pretty bad, honestly. Uh, and it's the same for you and me, for like everyone. So for me in my first couple of interviews it like if we date back like 15 years they were really bad like i completely <laughs> messed up a couple of them um but nowadays in let's say the past sort of five years i'm actually near like a hundred percent of interviews so when i go to land a new consulting gig or uh, a full-time employment role i almost 100 percent get the role um, and that's why i feel that i actually have authority to speak on the subject because when I do this, it actually works. Um, and the first thing that we should probably talk about is how do you know which role to apply for? So let's say you look at LinkedIn in the, you know, the list of um, open job postings for LinkedIn or any other place, and you click in and you look at the, um, you know, the job description and you see the list of re required skills. And I'm doing required in air quotes here because the way I see this list of skills is basically a wish list from the employer. Let's say I'm the employer, right? So if, like, if I can find my perfect candidate, this is the list of skills that they would have. Maybe they don't, but as close as possible to this list. So the best way that I usually compare this to, to people and friends is when I was a kid, like you know, let's go back to when I was like, what, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Um, I had these these magazines, these toy magazines and when we sort of closed in on Christmas and stuff then I got to take a pencil and I got to like, draw rings around specific toys and stuff and like basically that was my wish list, right? Like I want this one and I want this one and this one and this one and just circled everything that I wanted and it wasn't that I expected to get all of these things that I sort of circled in the magazine but it was my wish list, like this would be amazing if I got all of these things, right? And that's the way that I see most or almost every single job description. It's like the list of required skills is a wish list. Um, and don't feel that you have to fill 
like that you have to sort of meet every single one of these expectations just apply for that anyway who knows right so maybe it's just a wish list or maybe they didn't get enough candidates and you know your CV still stood out so again just keep on applying for a lot of roles it's a numbers game you need to mess up a couple of times to be honest that's just you know you have to go through that I suppose if you're not uh, you know uh, God-given talent for interviews, but most of us are not. I'm not, so um, I've done a few of these, these terrible ones. So, funny story about that. The, probably the worst interview that I've done was, you know, when I was really inexperienced, and I was like 24, 25 maybe. And I went to this job. It wasn't in security or IT or anything. It was just way before that. It was a long time ago. Um, and then we had the interview. It went pretty bad, to be honest. I can, you know, I could already feel that. I was too nervous and everything. And then we got to the, you know, the classical interview questions like where do you see yourself in five years and all of that. And one of the questions that I got was, so why do you want to work for us specifically? Like what made you send your application to us? And I couldn't come up with anything. Uh, and it, it, you know, my answer was literally the legit answer. But what I said was, it's pretty close to where I live. Like, that's it. And the, uh, the recruiter just looked at me and said, okay, so, but like, is there anything specific about our company that you, you know, what stood out amongst all the other ones? And I'm like, you know, like I, can, I can walk like five, it's five minutes walking from my place, so it's pretty convenient. That's it. Um, she wasn't very impressed, to be honest. Uh, so I didn't get that role, um, and rightfully so. So I messed that one up, like badly. If you're thinking about which roles to apply for and how do you actually land, how do you get that interview to, to start with? How do you get that interview? How do you nail that interview? How do you actually get the role, right? I think we need to step back a couple of months, at least, before the interview. What I've done in the past, at least, is I've tried to look for a way to stand out amongst others in the crowd, right? Because there's so many applicants that you need, you need to be special in some way. And that's why I like to go back a couple of months and like start working on myself before that. So to build up a portfolio of resources, of it could be like articles on Medium or your own blog posting. It could be YouTube videos, Twitter threads, whatever, right? So I can show the employer what I can do. And that's the way that I like to stand out. I think the closest sort of comparison that I can give to this is let's look at say street artists specifically these portrait street artists you know that we you can go up to you pay I don't know 10 20 euros bucks dollars whatever like you pay a specific amount of money and you get them to uh, draw a portrait of you right like naturally you want as good a portrait as possible right so you want to you you want to get someone who's really good so, imagine yourself, you're standing in this street of artists, you have like, I don't know, let's say three artists, right? And two of them, they're standing there, ready to, you know, take your payment and start, start drawing you. And next to them, they have these stacks of paintings that they've, they've drawn, right? With amazing portraits, like they're really, really good, they're really detailed, they're just amazing, right? And then you have the third one, who has nothing beside him, he just has, you know, his pencil and stuff and he's like yeah I'm ready to draw you but you have no idea if he's good or not so maybe you'll ask him like so how come you charge the same amount as these two guys because these two guys are really good right and he's like no I'm better than they are just trust me bro I am just I'm just I'm, I'm just better and you know if you're in this position like what do you do artist number three claims that he's much better than the other two but he has no way of proving that to you, right? But then the other two, they have all these portraits lined up and they're just you know, showing right next to them um, of what they can do, so you know they're good. Like, which one would you hire? Like, if it's me, I would hire one of the two who I know are good, even though person number three claims they are better, right? And I like to imagine it's the same thing when I send in a job application. It could be uh, my medium article or my medium profile rather with all my articles that I've written it could be my YouTube channel with interviews with podcasts I've done 
it could be maybe your own blog with like write-ups of things you've done in try hack me or hack the box actually let's switch roles here you are responsible for hiring a new IT professional into your company for this example let's just say that you are hiring a pen tester a junior pen tester and then you get these numbers of applications that you have to sort of sift through and pick out the ones to stand out um, and one of them has the normal CV, a personal note, and that's it. Like nothing really stands out. And then you have person number two, which has almost the same CV, almost the same personal note. But they have also written up 23 articles on how they've solved hack the box virtual machines. Now they could be very easy machines or easy machines, it doesn't really matter. But like here are the 23 machines that I sold in hack the box. And here are the things that I sold in Try Hack Me. I am the top 1% in Try Hack Me. Um, and then here's my GitHub repo with some things that I've written, um, like some projects that I've been working on. Um, and then you add that into your application. Like which one would you hire? The one where you can actually read through what they've done, you can get a feel for how they write, what they write. You see that and you're like, well, this one actually stands out a little bit. I can see that they can actually, they can do a write-up, uh, which you know is essential for a pen tester role. Well, we know that they have to do a write-up for their pen testing assignments going forward, and this is how that person writes, because like, we can see it in the medium articles. So, like, well, that makes sense. Um, and it's all very easy, very easy, 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 medium, medium, medium. Good. I mean, they have the knowledge at least. We know that we can see it here. To sum this up. What I would do is, in order to prepare like months in advance, because that's where I would start, if I was looking for my first job as a pen tester, as a SOC analyst, as a security specialist, something on the more technical side, I would absolutely go solve a lot of hack the box machines. I would do try hack me, like a lot of it. And then I would write up these solutions in medium posts so register an account on medium for everything that you solve on try hack me hack the box write it up with screenshots with text and then just post it for every single one of these things that you solve so you build up a portfolio and then you do this week after week after week month after month and given enough time you will actually end up with quite a long list of things that you've done that's how you stand out and maybe you do more things maybe there's things that I didn't really think about, like maybe you know this better than I do, I don't know. So do that. And then you apply for jobs. And you're not gonna get the first ones. So, you, let's say you apply for seven jobs one week, you don't get any interviews. You keep on building on that portfolio, so you add more and more write-ups, you do more and more boxes, you do more and more try hack me. You do burp suites course, and then you write that one up, and then you add that into your resume. That's how I do it to stand out, and I think that works really, really well. And it doesn't matter that someone has done it before. That's also really important to, um, to touch on. So even though there might be like 15 write-ups of the box that you just did, it doesn't matter. We're not looking for a unique solution or a unique, like being the only one to have sold the box. That's not it. We're trying to build up a portfolio of what you have done. So how you write, how you think, the way you did it, and it's not about being the best, it's like, who are you? How do you stand out? So that's how I would do it. And I would start working on that right now. All right, thanks. We'll speak more about this in the next episode.